Um, I, I've got a very exciting job of launching a brand new project in Scotland, the Scottish Hectare Rare Plant Project. And this is my feeble attempt at a catchy acronym, SHARP. But uh, quickly, to, to give you a little bit of background about this, a couple of years ago, uh, Robert Northridge and Records and Research Committee, as was, consulted the uh, recorders <clears throat> and members on possible post atlas projects. Um, 25 uh, Scottish Vice County recorders uh, contributed uh, to that process. Uh, they were asked to rank uh, nine possible projects in order of popularity. And uh, this little table here shows uh, the results of that. Uh, so uh, education it came at a high priority, uh, as a high priority. Uh, and the study of um, uh, uh, collecting information on ecology, abundance and habitat of native and non-native species uh, was second top. Having a holiday, uh, came third, and uh, atlas mapping, monitoring change, uh, projects related to climate change, uh, they were slightly lower priorities. We also asked uh, recorders and members for their own ideas, uh, and many uh, suggested floras, checklists, and rare plant registers, and other publications. Uh, the second most uh, popular idea was uh, focus species surveys and uh, third focus site surveys. But the problem was we had no central support for, for, for any of those projects because uh, the BSBI science staff uh, were, indeed they are, all fully preoccupied with Atlas 2020 and, and will be and, and right up until and probably a bit beyond it's published uh, next year. Uh, so it was suggested the country committees should come up with their own ideas, um, remembering that training education uh, was a high priority according to the, the survey. Um, but then sadly, uh, COVID-19 scuppered all our plans and field work for 2020. It's about this time last year, wasn't it, when, when we first went into the lockdown. And uh, it was left us with a, a, a complete blank canvas. So we quickly put together the Garden Wildflower Hunt uh, project, uh, which is ideally suited to lockdown botanists. But we can't have another year without projects. Well, one year is fine. Um, I, and indeed many recorders and, and members needed a, a rest after the heroic Atlas 2020 efforts. Um, and many enjoyed the, the chance to indulge their pri private passions, uh, like those that we've heard from, uh, uh, like those that Brian Ballinger spoke about this morning. Um, and many people got involved with uh, updating checklists and rare plant registers. But we can't have another year without a project. So, uh, well, the first thing to point out is, of course, we're not, we don't like a project. We, we already have a major project and it's called the National Plant Monitoring Scheme. I, I, and this has been going on, uh, just in case you hadn't noticed, since 2015. Um, but it's been rather eclipsed by Atlas uh, because we've, we've been focusing so much on Atlas. But, but really, the National Plant Monitoring Scheme is our main project to monitor change um, in the landscape. It's a habitat-based monitoring scheme, um, suitable for botanists of all levels. Actually, it's got three entry levels uh, for beginners, intermediates, and uh, recorder level, VCR uh, level botanists. Um, and it's collaboration uh, of the BSBI and our partners uh, at Plant Life and the UKCEH. Now, they are looking for more volunteers especially in, in the more remote parts. Um, and the currently, uh, although the, the programme has been disrupted by COVID, they, they are currently offering a fantastic 
program of training webinars. Uh, so if you'd like to, to get involved in that and let, let to learn more, uh, go and have a look at their website. And the second project I'd like to announce, and this is very exciting, um, we like to join forces with the Botanical Society of Scotland uh, on the Urban Flora project. Uh, this is a great project. I, again, it's been going for five years and we've not really paid much attention to it because we further up to make this whole project. Um, some BSBI botanists have got more involved than others, particularly uh, members who are in both societies, like Brian, for example, um, but there are others. Uh, and a name of the Urban Flora Project is to record all wild plants in Scotch towns and cities with a population of more than a thousand. Uh, it's ideal for all sizes of groups, uh, so ideal for uh, varying lockdown restrictions, and it can be done locally, so uh, we can minimise the carbon footprint, which is something I think the BSBI really needs to start thinking about more when it's coming up with project ideas. And again, I, I, as we'll hear from Michael Phillip later on, uh, if you get out in small groups, it's a great learning environment. Um, so I, I'm not gonna say any more because uh, the next talk by John Grace is gonna be on the Urban Forum. So that's enough of that. So, my idea for a project which uh, has been developed uh, in consultation with the Scottish Committee and various BSBI members and uh, staff colleagues is the Scottish Hectare Rare Plant Project. Uh, this aims to refine notable species population and make very detailed ecological records of them. And so there's a significant move away from Atlas Square bashing and uh, just presence, absence recording, which I think for, for many people will be quite welcome, actually. We, we've, we've done a lot of uh, that kind of recording. Uh, so we, we specifically want to find, uh, refine notable species and populations that haven't been recorded uh, since before 2000, despite all those years of intensive atmosphere survey work. So, so this is going to be quite a challenge. And we hope to target particular hectares where there's a, a cluster of such notable species. And if we select them so they're local to, local to where the recorder lives or where local members uh, are, we can minimize uh, the carbon footprint. It can be done by all sizes of groups individually, twos, threes, local groups, a uh, few meetings. Uh, so it's, it's very flexible. And again, it's a great learning opportunity. Um, with just one target species. Okay, we, we, we're, we're gonna ask participants to, to record associated species, but with only one target species, um, that is manageable for uh, even beginner intermediate botanists to, to engage with. And final point, uh, we really hope it's going to gather uh, valuable data to form a future red data list uh, and uh, rare plant, county rare plant registers. Okay, a, a quick word about the methodology. It's going to be very similar to the <clears throat> Threatened Plant Project, which we ran for five years. Um, the, the idea is to, to, to use the, a very similar form, recording form, which asks uh, a set of detailed ecological questions like slope, aspect, altitude, uh, population, uh, count, extent, we ask people to work out the number of 10 meter cells that the population extends into, assess whether it's threatened, um, and make a list of associated species.
And the species we, we want to include are uh, red dataless species, Scottish biodiversity species, nationally important, uh, locally rare and scarce, and possibly active flight. So wh wh where there is an active flight list for a vice county, uh, then that could be used if, if the recorder wishes. And well, we, we want to concentrate on uh, natives and archaeophytes. So generally, we're, we're not going to look at neophytes. And again, it's entirely optional whether recorders wish to uh, record microspecies. But if we, if we do want to uh, search for microspecies, it'll be really important to collect specimens sustainably of course, and consult referees. Um, but like I say, that, that is an optional extra. Um, so which hectares? Well, we're going to develop a BSBI database query, which can be run for each vice county, uh, which will identify hectares and rank them with the number of these taxa. So you, you can see at a glance which hectares have the greatest diversity of long lost species waiting to be refound. Um, and ideally, uh, we'd have at least one sharp hectare per vice county surveyed, uh, possibly near where the recorder lives, but possibly not, um, and possibly more, uh, ideally more. Um, so if, if local members and local groups want to get involved, they should speak to their uh, county recorders and ask and agree uh, for a, a, a local he hectare to concentrate on. So I, I, I've run that analysis uh, for Wintershire as an example, uh, just, just to let you see how it might work in practice, what species might come up. Um, so the, the analysis identifies uh, four 10 kilometer squares uh, in particular, which uh, all have about 15 taxa that haven't been record, recorded since before 2000. You see them here in, in the, the Rins of Galloway. And there's another one just to the northeast of Stranraer itself. Um, and if you analyze all, those, all the species that uh, have yet to be found, um, since 2000 in those four squares uh, and group them. By far the biggest group is arable weeds, which is, is perhaps not surprising given that they're in general decline. Um, but it's, the, the, the point of arable weeds is um, they, they have become rare because uh, of change in, in agricultural practice. With let, Less ground are, is being tilled, with less than server ground, therefore fewer arbor weeds. So you do have to be really opportunistic about uh, going out and refinding them. Uh, whenever you see uh, road improvement schemes or house building schemes with disturbed soil, uh, dive in there and um, uh, qu quickly have a look, and see what is popping up from any persistent seed bank. Um, they, they are a really interesting group. Now, uh, the next biggest group was uh, a group of coastal species, but surprising given the location of the hectares. Um, pretty sure most of these species, uh, like rock samphire and brush leaf fescue, uh, are likely uh, to still be there. It's just that nobody's been to look. Um, then there's a group of really rare things. Um, like well celery, small rest harrow, that doesn't, happen, that doesn't occur in many places in Scotland, uh, and pillwort. Uh, now I'm quite sure recorders will have gone to look for those during the Atlas years, uh, so that it'll be important to do a bit of research, um, see, see what's going on. Uh, and then there's a couple interesting archifacts like masterwort and monkshuber. <clears throat> And the really weird thing about these, these species is that all botanists never gave them a, de a decent good reference. They've always got hectare good references uh, or, or 
at best maybe tetrad. Um, so, so they're all they're always tricky to refine, but they're they're always great when you do find refine them. Uh, the final group is is orchids, and I guess they're they're prominent in these lists because botanists have not visited the hectares uh, at the right time of the year, uh, because orchids are relatively uh, short flowering period. You've got to be the right place at the right time to see them. Uh, so, just quickly look at uh, another example. I, I rerun, reran the query for uh, my own Vice County, Mid Perthshire. Uh, again, four hectares stand out here, uh, all of which have about 25 taxa. There's three, uh, three hectares that are more upland or montane, and one lowland a hectare down near Perth here in the southeast. Um, Again, arable weeds is, is one of the biggest groups, um, but montane species, it, it comes a close second. Uh, and it's gonna be great fun trying to refine some of uh, these montane species. There's a big group of orchids and uh, there's a new group. There's, um, uh, there were lots of uh, hawkweed species. And, it, it would be interesting to, to tackle some of these. I mean, Hyratium prenathoides it is quite a distinctive hawkweed and, and it, it would be really nice to get better information about it. Um, but we'll, we'll just have to see here that goes. It's, it's up to the vice county to decide uh, which groups, and which species uh, they'll tackle. But one of the big issues about this book is um, it's been really important finding the best possible details and good references for target species. The, the query returned lots of records with only hectare resolution uh, grid references. So that is going to be really tough to find them. So my idea is um, that the VCRs are going to do need to do a lot of research to try and uh, Get better information about those hectares records uh, where it exists and bo botanists are going to need all their botanical skills in the field to sniff them out and it's probably going to be best to start looking for for those species that we do have better information for so if we start looking for the, the species with particular good references and one column or good reference first before tackling and some of those. But hopefully, with such a, a, a density of species in the one hectare, you might encounter some of the uh, um, hectare species when you're looking for the uh, better located taxa. Here we do for time running over. Um, Okay, two key points, uh, just last few slides here. Um, it's really important to include sketches and photographs. Um, it's really helpful uh, when trying to find uh, refined populations. Uh, this lower image is of Arthur Seat showing the populations in uh, Spring Sandwort, Miniartia verna. Uh, and that sort of uh, image uh, attached to the report is going to be really helpful for future botanists. Uh, a little advert now, uh, we're looking for a volunteer who could enter the data. Uh, we definitely don't want uh, these very detailed records shoehorned into map uh, because uh, most of the data would end up in the comments field and become unsearchable. So what we want to do is find a volunteer who would be happy to enter the data into an access database uh, from where it could be imported straight into the database with all fields intact. Okay, last slide to sum up. Um, it's a project to search for notable species not seen before 2000, in particular hectares with a cluster. And when they're refound, we'd like you to make very detailed records. Uh, I'm working just now on uh, the recording form. We'll issue it shortly along with the guidance. Um, and it's a great project for 
uh, involving local members. We'd like one, at least one sharp hectare surveyed in every vice county in Scotland in 2021, but ideally more if you involve those local members. And hopefully the data entry will all be done centrally. Um, so recorders won't have to do that. 